Good morning, Tottenham. It's 8 a.m. here in California. Uh, we just went full time in the Villa match. Uh, I'm very disappointed in about several areas that we will jump into. Um, first thoughts four fullbacks to start the game. I know we are very, very thin, but. I just think I, I know Ash Phillips picked up a knock on international duty. I just wonder if perhaps Alfie Dorrington could have gotten his first start or at least made a substitution appearance. Definitely not dire, but uh, you just think perhaps it could have been premature, but there was a big noticeable height and physicality issue on the back line. We started four fullbacks. Ben Davies has been an auxiliary center back for the last two seasons, three seasons, but it's not enough. Uh, we definitely need to sign a new center back this chance, this January window. Um, apart from the defense, uh, Lo Celso and Hill both getting the start. I love to see it. Lo Celso was due. It was his first Premier League start since Nuno. That was before Conte. That's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. He's a class player. He's always getting international minutes with Argentina. He needs to be featured in the lineup more often. Um, Lolo Bentancur. That was a tough, tough knock he took. Um, I heard reports it's just on the ankles. Uh, really, really hope it's not that knee that he's just spent eight months recovering from. Uh, that would be a massive blow. Hope he's fit. Kulisevsky, another lineup block I want to talk about. Kulisevsky in the 10. I've been doing this since FIFA 21 with Lucas Mora when I, when I needed the pace out wide and I started Lucas Mora up top and we didn't have a cam instead of dropping Kane in I put Kulu in the 10 yeah he's all left but he's also quick as hell and he's got these little quick motions that are oh I love him there I love him there the, he made great runs today um and even though he's all le only left footed oh my goodness such a massive threat drawing multiple late late uh free kicks in the game He's predictable, but you, they still don't know what to do with him. So massive performance from him today. Not the result we wanted, but there were several starters that really shined today. Since the match kicked off, it was clear we were going to have a high line versus another high line. Two very attacking sides today. Uh, and it wasn't the, quite the goal fest we wanted, but boy, was there a plethora of opportunities. It was ridiculous. From the get go, should have been could have been two two as the commentators were saying within the first four minutes. Um, oh, Kulisevsky and Sony two had two separate wonderful flick ons to play cut right through the Villa line. Uh, that Sony flick on to set up Kulisevsky at first, oh, hitting the post that was that was a heartbreaker. But Sony's Sony's weight on that pass was brilliant. Let Kulisevsky get past two defenders. I don't know how he got around the last one. Uh, but it set him up perfectly. And then Kulusevsky, a few minutes later, with this little Croy flick on to Brian Hill, which Hill had p passed it back across goal. But still, love to see Hill's getting chances and he's being aggressive. But also, Kulusevsky fully rose to the occasion in the number 10 today. Now, I won't blame the result, the zero points, on no Kuti and no Van de Ven that, and no Madison, but and plenty of other injuries. But what I will say is Villa was getting a bit lucky on those uh, set pieces. And by luck, I mean they were taking advantage of us not having a six-foot-tall player on defense. Uh, but, you know, in the first half, their only real chance before the goal was that early, early Pau Torres header off the free kick. And then, of course, they score in the 47th, 51st, 45 plus 7, whatever the hell it was, plus stoppage time, uh... In the first half, Pau Torres, that header, and granted, it was a great, props to him, great header, but it's just, come on, Spurs. It, 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 clearly, it was their only threat, was their aerial advantage, and apart from that, we there were a couple stupid free kicks, even throw-ins that we gave away. Not that it cost us the game at all, but Destiny Adogi, what the hell are you doing with a foul throw-in? How old are you? That is ridiculous. And I know Ange didn't show it on his face, but I know that pissed him off. We're up there. We're all about our little intricate one-two, one-touch passes. Uh, and just that, that type of loss of momentum, like, we can't afford that. This was a fourth place versus fifth place match. From the get-go, it was, it was an even brawl. And just these little things like that. We, got, we have to... 
keep the ball when we can keep the ball. We can't afford to make any mistakes. Otherwise, we will be punished for them, as we should. If you have no center backs in, you're giving away stupid free kicks. Don't be surprised when you go down. It's ridiculous. Udogi's been my favorite player on the Spurs squad ever since the first match of the season. He just, first two games especially, he just injected so much pace and attacking threat on the left side of the field uh, into a, a spur. I've never, from who was doing that in the past? Regalone? No. Danny Rose had some some crosses and the occasional long shot banger 10 years ago, but really haven't seen that in a long time. So that was very refreshing to see. I will say, though, he's in a bit of a lull the last few games. Of course, first game back from the stupid suspension, but he, he's been a bit underwhelming. I could sense his fatigue later in the second half, but, I mean, he is our star boy, but he's he thinks he's Vinicius sometimes, and it's it's ridiculous. He's, he's still only 20 years old, and he's still adjusting to the pace of the Premier League, so... I love his individual spark and what he brings to the squad, but I think his ego should be knocked down a step or two. Love him, but right now you're making a very good case for Mickey Van de Ven to be my favorite signing or matters. Um, Adogi, please pick it up and please stop thinking for yourself. Thank you so much. I love what you bring to this squad. Keep it up, mate. We all love you. Keep that passion. You fire us up more than anyone else, but... Also, please stay level-headed and make good decisions with the ball. There were some errant passes today that were nearly costly. One player I think is due for some flowers is Ben Davies. Um, I've been a skeptic of his for the last five years at least, but when he's had a role to fill in, he has consistently done his job. He instilled confidence in me just watching him. Uh, Captain Wales during the week, and, you know, he just has this not almost a veteran mentality, but just this sense of reliability. I mean, he's not naturally a center back, but he's been forced to play in there so many times. He looked like a leader out there. Saw him almost score off the corner of that header. Um, but props to him, man. N playing with a bunch of fullbacks, just running around like, like who knows what's about to happen. And he is in charge of all of them. So he filled in for that, that governor general role uh, without Mickey and without Kuti. But, you know, hope I hope he's not <laughs> playing there for that long, but I will give him his flowers. He he was he was great today. One of the key components of Ange Ball, which Postacoglu has instilled into the squad, which I love to see, has been the inverted fullbacks. Now, he, he'll say he's just copying Pep, but this has me finally feel like feeling like we're playing like a, a big team. And by that, I mean we're not just throwing everyone behind the ball and it's not just a team effort like like when think about the old spurs from the last five years if someone loses the ball they all swarm together as kind of panic kind of team solidarity to you know try to quickly recover so that nothing bad happens but now you know we have the faith in our center backs ben davis and emerson royale two non-center backs to hold down the fort back there. So then it, it gives Poro and Udogi are up there literally sitting on, on the top of the box. And I love to see it. It's it, this, it gives me a sense of confidence because I know the players have this sense of established trust within each other. So that was great to see. Um, Lo Celso, man, that goal. I was so happy for him. I, no one's going to believe me, but as they were setting up for that corner, I said to myself, you know, Kulu, he's sitting on the top of the box. I would love to see a little half volley top bins out of him. Maybe I wasn't 100 percent right. It went, it bounced out to Los Celso instead. But oh man, I mean, he got a bit of a fortunate uh, ricochet off Diego Carlos. But him scoring and just turning around, it was like the weight off his shoulders. First start in the Prem since under Nuno. He has been more than due, and I'm so happy he got on the score sheet today and played at least 80 minutes, so that was great. I want to make a point about Hoiberg. You know, he's been class. He's our Viking. He brings a whole spirit, you know, ready for battle attitude, and it's felt throughout the side, and I do love what he brings to us from a mentality standpoint. What I will say, though, as much as it pains me to think, is that I don't think he's cut out for Ange Ball. You know, you see the players 
that, you know, he's picking between in the squad when it comes to Hoiberg. If it was all healthy, we'd have Eve. We'd have Benton Kerr. We'd have, honestly, I'm putting Los Celso at this point uh, above Hoiberg. It's just, and the commentators touched on it for two seconds. I wish they expanded a bit more during the match. But it's just, there was an instance where uh, one of the center backs, center backs, passed it up to Hoiberg. And Hoiberg didn't even think for a second for turning around and taking it up the field, looking over his shoulder. It was it was straight back, and it was a bit it was a bit Conte esque for me. It was a bit too much of that, you know, defensive mentality, and not what Ange has done at all for this for the squad. Um, so I mean, I'm not gonna judge him on one tiny little back pass, but at the same time, it, you know, when he gets on the ball, it it feels like there's there could be a heavy touch, or he could get. The, the, Sony played him a, a mini through ball in the match, and you know he his he just was a bit off balance, hard to get the co- the ball out from under your feet, and and it, my issue was is I could almost see it happen before it actually did. So he's a bit predictable, and I don't think he has that that agility and quickness uh, that Ange Ball demands. Almost had an absolute banger. Uh, uh, Debo Martinez had a great save for that, but. You know, I know he's capable of the occasional long shot, and he puts in a crunching tackle now and then, but I just don't think he's the the dynamic number eight or number six, if that's what we really want out of him. But I think Eve's got that on lock. Uh, but, you know, you just want more of a box-to-box, more of a, ooh, can, you know, not that Brian Hill plays this position, but you see Lo Celso doing it multiple times. These, these little step intricate step-overs that... Boom, boom, instantly the two defenders that were swarming him are gone. And he didn't even touch the ball. He just has the footwork to to carry him through uh, these types of situations. So I, I, I'm i not fully given up on him, but there's rumors of a $30 million, uh, $30 million bid for Hoiberg in January. And if that comes, man, I'm on board with it. Uh, yeah, I'd be sad to see him go, but... He's done his. I think he's left his mark here, but I, I I like to think Hoiberg's chapter is over in a Spurs uniform. All right, I will leave y'all with my man of the match today. It's got to be Kulusevski. You know, stepping into the number ten for the first time in a starting role in a Spurs kit that I've seen, and I like to think he rose to the occasion. You know, from the get go, he was chasing down, making these forward runs. Um, it did seem like it was almost forcing us into playing kick and run especially with their inviting high line on Villa. So, you know, he was, it was, he was, he was licking his chops trying to get him behind. Um, but, you know, when, when he did and when he got on the ball, you didn't know if he was going to keep breaking through on goal, if he was going to quickly turn around and hold it up. Um, and I like that unpredictability that comes with him. You know, he, you think he's just left-footed, one-dimensional player but he's capable of so much he can dribble he can pass he can definitely shoot we love that little rbb finesse shot almost had that back post banger today um that we know and love from fifa but uh he's got this physicality i I don't know if it was diego carlos or john mcginn but he sent someone horizontal and that just fired me up uh, and you know, he's really becoming a, a, a very complete player. Uh, he got Sonny involved. He got Brennan Johnson involved. Uh, not enough time for spotlights on those two today, but love Bren so much. Going to talk about him plenty in other videos. Sonny, usually the star of the show, <sighs> had two offside today. That was tough. That one hurt. Um, but you know, son's most inspiring player in the world. Uh, so he's he's going to be down on himself, and he's just going to come back firing uh, against City. Big match. Going to have an outlook put out for you guys ahead of that match uh, next weekend. But, you know, there's no better time to be a Spurs fan. Uh, three losses in a row. Got to take that one on the chin. You know, we were just talking about and setting the record for most points in your first however many games to start uh your premier first premier league campaign you talked about this crazy invincible home record he's had that's carried across multiple clubs well now we just lost two in a row so you know the chelsea one was like oh two red cards you can put an asterisk next to that okay we just 
blew the lead to Aston Villa. Good side. Credit to them. But we deserved the points, without a doubt. We led in possession stats. We led in, led in the passing stats by a large amount. And I, it just felt like the three points slipped through our hands today. Um, the fatigue was very evident. I wanted to see some more young guns get on the field. I wanted to see a Jamie Donnelly debut. I wanted to see an Alfie Dorrington get some minutes. Um, but, you know, just got to look ahead to City. And I trust whatever the hell you think is right. Um, whether that's Brian Hill. Hopefully Lolo is safe enough to uh, to start again. Uh, that was my whole... I just I held my breath. I was like, if that's his damn knee, bro. I'm going to be rolling over, crying myself. But I think it's just an ankle. Um, but yeah, I'm going to have another video for you guys ahead of the city match. Uh, we'll be breaking it down, looking into it a bit. But all I can say, man, is come on, you Spurs. I love this club so much.